So the way I put Kara's theme together was to come up with the tune and then the sort of riffs and then the harmony. So I thought I might quickly show you how it's actually constructed. Kara's theme is basically the syllables in her name. There are only two, so that's easy enough. It sounds like this. That's it, really. But it repeats, so it goes like this. And with any good tune, you take it for a walk, so it's... And then from that, it kind of get loops. So the whole tune is this. But on the cello, when you're trying to be quieter with it, it actually sits happily an octave lower as well, like this. Now, if you're trying to make it sound more intimate, a good trick with a string instrument is actually not to play on the ends of the fingers, but to play on the inside of the fingers, and then also move the bow a little further up the string. If you do that, you can actually sound more fluty. If you go really crazy, you can make it sound like pan pipes. But so for Kara's theme, I actually often play it on the pads like this, and with a really flat bow quite harp, and it sounds like this. And if you add this really wide, lazy vibrato, it starts to sound like it's a memory, not an actual thing, like this. So you can then combine those together and you have all these different weird layers. Now, pushing it the other way, when there are moments of great stress, it actually sounds more like um, electric guitar feedback. And I have this technique that I developed when I was quite young of actually, it was actually from not practicing, it was actually from mucking around rather than practicing. And I, I lo always loved the sound with an electric guitar. <laughs> being able to kind of play the feedback. So you can do the same thing quite delicately as well. If you find the kind of harmonic layer and chase it, so like this. Which sort of sounds like a very expensive effect, but it isn't. It's actually just using a loose contact with the fingers. Now all of that sits over an ostinato, which is just posh Italian word for a riff, which is this. And this is this came from the sort of flickering that I saw in the fireplace in the place of staying and realised that actually this kind of flickering and crackling could be a really good inside engine for, for the theme. And it goes like this. So what I'm doing there is I'm actually just bouncing the bow on the single note and then moving it across the strings. Now, that's not good enough bass to my ear, so what I then also do is I flick the string like this. I'll do the same here. Then the only other element, really, that I've added in is once you've established those layering over one another, you can then start to shift actually the implied harmony, because that all just sounds like it's in C minor. But actually, what you can do is you can start to move the root around like this. So I'm just gonna layer all of those quickly together. It sounds like this. So here's the riff, first of all. the octave.
the electric guitar. The dark at the end there but anyway that's how i write music i don't really write at a keyboard particularly um i tend to loop stuff on the cello and then record it in in separate tracks uh into into a door and then start to build samples out from it i also make my own samples as well that find their way into things like iris or into ableton and then from those start to build entirely new instrument groups as well. For some of the more sort of horror sounds, I'm starting to do those at the end there, it'll be things like close stacking, um, glissandi. So you can actually play a double note. Now, what I can do is if I, if I play that and move it, it sounds like a mechanical acceleration. In fact, you can do a really good Doppler effect with that as well make things sound like they're sweeping past. You can also, by using the bow in an unconventional way, uh, make quite effective foley sounds. So in fact, within that track, there's a lot of kind of grinding nasty sounds that are shoved through distortion effects and octave pedals. Things like quite threatening noises. If I pull the bow but mute the strings, it sounds like this. It's kind of nasty, it sounds like a door creaking. Um, you can also do sort of riffs around the, the, the upper end of the harmonic series like this which when you stack them sound really cool. I'll just show you. Chorus theme over there, so it sounds like this. I love the cello, it's kind of the best synthesizer in the world. It, you can pretty much make any noise on it as long as your imagination will, will kind of take you there. So it's obviously one thing to sort of build these clusters when you're playing with a loop pedal and an instrument, but then the question is how to then score them back out in, in such a way that the orchestra understand them. And I found what I tend to do is either invent sort of my own notation or make it so clear on the backing track that the type of effect that you want, that it, it's, then, it's then incredibly sort of obvious that it's got to be something different. And, you know, if the technique is, is clearly notated, that obviously really helps. One of the essential things actually about writing music that is different from what else is out there is making sure that what you're doing is sort of niche and has found sounds that are only your own. So being an instrumentalist, it's sometimes easy to do that because you can spend so long actually refining noises that aren't necessarily within conventional sound banks. So I find it extremely helpful to use samples to build core harmony riffs and the width and space. But then what really starts to add value is then once you layer on top of that sounds that are sort of dirty and fragmented and fractured and actually sound like they've got this organic, natural chaos to them as well. There's almost no occasion I can think of where adding in a little bit of dirt and frailty doesn't actually help the overall sound picture that you're trying to make. And especially when I'm layering on top of samples, especially if they're well recorded, it's sometimes really good to weave in and out of those elements of bow change noise, even breathing. And I found even on this soundtrack that where I can hear somebody breathing in, for instance, on an upbeat, 
10 years ago, I would have edited that out. Now I leave it in because that actual naturalness and that organic nature is picked up subconsciously or subliminally by the viewer or the player to such an extent that it sounds more human and humanistic and more natural. So it's a really good habit, I think, to look at how far you can push, if like, the edges of the sound, whether it's from an instrument or whether it's from samples that you're building. And then at which point there's a crossover with where do they have enough characteristic in common with your conventional samples to be able to knit in and then pull them into a different place. So obviously in using string samples, I, I used a lot of Sable and Albion samples within, within the scoring for this, um, particularly at the sketch stage. Um, and some of them stay in, in the center of, of what I'm doing, but bringing in uh, an organic cello part really helps pull them together then with the orchestral recording that's done in Abbey Road, it actually forms a sort of bonding varnish between the two different worlds, and it's a very effective trick.